Chelsea Gibson. I'm not sure whether your folks are here. She said they might be here. Chelsea is a long family friend that has played with them in, in uh, yes, we fought with them in our uh, concerts, away in uh, uh, participating in music in the uh, city, Portland, uh, orchestras, for fun at home, at church. So they don't, they've known each other for a long time. They, they play well together. Okay. Grant is a minor grant. I'll put this mic up to you. <laughs> now, as we are looking forward to this wonderful, spirit filled uh, time together, uh, let's pray together. Gracious Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity to praise your name with the voice and the language of music, which is universal. It touches hearts all over the world. No words need to be spoken, and yet we are united with a spirit that is, music is written in and then performed in. So we are praying for skill and for uh, the musicians to, to do their best, and we are praying for us as we're taking it in to be not just filled with praise and with her grace, but then to be willing to share it with those around us. And this is what it's all about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello, and thank you all for coming. Um, as my grandpa said, my name is Tiffany, and um, that's my brother and cousin and our friend Chelsea. And I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what um, the title of today's program is called. Um, you may have seen a flyer. The, the term is musicianary. And as you can tell, it's a combination of two words, uh, musician and, mus and missionary. Um, and as you can see, we're all musicians, so that's a little bit obvious. But the reason why we chose mm, musicianary as the term is, um, again, like my grandpa said, we all have a purpose for our music beyond just our own personal enjoyment, is that, and that is to be a blessing to others and um, to spread the good news that God is love. And so I have a verse that very, um, it encompasses very well the mission of our music, and that is Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. And so that is our prayer today. Um, as we have a couple of new songs for you, as well as some old favorites and some familiar classical pieces, that um, as you listen and, and listen to the music, as well as the stories and the testimonies, that you would have a um, experience of renewed faith and trust in the Lord, which we all love very much and want to honor and glorify with the music today. So enjoy um, the next three pieces we'll play. Come now, come as the year, and tis wonderful. <clears throat>
chapter 16, 14 through 18. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre. The lyre is a stringed instrument similar to a harp or a violin or any of the instruments they're playing there. Um, he will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well, and bring him to me. <clears throat> One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem, who knows how to play the lyre. He's a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man. Who was that? David. Yes, that's right. And the Lord is with him. Whenever the Spirit from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. <laughs> and uh, Tiffany asked me to share one experience of many that I've had in seeing God heal through music. So I'm going to tell you a little story. 
I don't know if any of you have heard of the Pathways to Health free medical care event that happens every so often in a large city around the country, but it's a group of Christian uh, physicians and other medical professionals, um, dentists and ophthalmologists and so forth that come together to offer free medical care. And this particular time was in Spokane, Washington. It was my first time participating and volunteering as a massage therapist where I did my fascia release. And it was my very first time and I was praying a lot about this because my purpose there was just to be a blessing and I really wanted to just be a vessel of Christ's hands on people. So I asked for a special blessing uh, for him to bless people through me that day and for him to send me just the right ones who needed him the most in the way that he was going to bless me. So, the very first person that was sent to me came very swiftly in a wheelchair early in the morning in convulsions. And I had never <coughs> experienced that before in a clinical setting doing hands-on therapy, con a convulsing person. So I immediately prayed and said, God, for some reason they're bringing her to me. Please help. And uh, this volunteer that brought her said, I thought that I felt a strong impression to bring her to you here in the massage and hydrotherapy department. I thought that maybe this could help. And I asked her what, what, the, what was the problem. She said she was in the dental clinic. She had been waiting for hours. Some of the people camp overnight and wait in line at these events so that they're able to have the care they need. She needed some dental work, and she they tried to do the dental work, but because she was convulsing and moving around, they couldn't do the dental work. And she really needed the dental work, and so this volunteer just brought her to me. <laughs> and um, we started by simply um, taking some deep breaths. And I asked her if I could pray with her. And she said yes. So we prayed with her. And I asked the volunteer to stay to help. And we let her be in the chair. And we prayed. Immediately after we prayed, I noticed she started to calm down. Just a little bit. Then we were able to have her stand up and get her onto the massage table. She laid down. I cradled her head. I asked the other volunteer to put her hands on her in another place, and we breathed together, and we prayed together. And after about five minutes, she had probably 75% quit convulsing, though was still a little bit. And at that time, we, at the same time, the other volunteer and I were prompted to begin singing so we began singing, and it's a familiar hymn that I think most of you know, that we knew by heart and were able to sing, and I believe it's hymn number 249, if I'm remembering correctly. Feel free to turn to, oh no, that's the wrong number. Oh. <laughs> 294. I'm sorry. Thought I was trusting my memory. It's 294. Feel free to turn with it, with us, to the hymn, and I've asked my family to join me up here. And we're going to sing this hymn together. We sing this hymn, and I'll finish the story after we sing this together.
Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder-working power. In the blood, in the blood, in the blood. Of the land there is power, there is power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the land. Thank you. It's much better than just me singing. We have the privilege of having the kids home just for a little while. It's a much richer experience, let's just put it that way, with their home. So, to finish the story, after we finished the song, she was completely still. And I was in tears. So, she wasn't the only one that was blessed that day. And I whispered in her ear, I said, do you, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes. I said, do you remember the story in the Bible where Jesus was sleeping in a boat and there was this big storm that came up and he continued to sleep. And his friends in the boat couldn't understand how he could be sleeping through a storm. She said, yeah, I remember that story. I said, well, Right now, you can make a choice. You can ask Jesus to stand up in your boat and say, peace, be still. And she said, okay. And she accepted Jesus into her heart that day. She asked him to stand up in her boat. And she was completely out of pain, was not convulsing anymore. She, the volunteer, took her back to the dental, apparently, apartment. I didn't see her for the rest of the day, but toward the end of the day, when I was almost finished, after several hours, somebody wheeled her back into the department, and she was beaming. She was glowing. She was glowing with the light of God. And she just said, thank you so much. And I just said, praise God.
share with you a story. It's a specific story about how God won a battle with music. In 2 Chronicles 20, it talks about a king named Jehoshaphat. <laughs> After hearing of the coming enemy ambush and seeing the Lord earnestly for help, he says this. Well, actually, the Bible says this. The army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. And after they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. This is an example of how music won a battle. And there's a quote that goes, goes along with it um, from Prophets and Kings, page 202. If more praising of God were engaged in now, hope and courage and faith would steadily increase. And would not this strengthen the hands of the valiant soldiers who today are standing in defense of truth? 
I want to tell you about a personal experience I had that God helped me win a battle. So during the latter part of my year at Fountain View Academy, this past year, my senior year, we were supposed to write a poem. Now, the requirement was a spoken word poem, but I thought to myself, hey, I've never written a song before, so why not write a poem and then set it to music? So that is exactly what ended up happening. Now, at the beginning of writing the song, I was very unsure what I was even going to write. But I prayed to God and said, God, this is your song. I want you to show me what I should write. And at the time, I was warring with doubt, doubting God's love, doubting that God was faithful, doubting that he wouldn't come through for me. But as I wrote the song, the words came to me that if I look into the past, I can see God's leading me, and I can't doubt anymore. I want to share with you a song, that song that I wrote.
All right, so another way that we like to use music, um, actually, I think all four of us have participated in straight music at some point, um, is, yeah, straight music or busking. Um, in Portland, sometimes we will go out and just set up on a street corner somewhere and play some music for the passers-by. And a lot of times it's a great way to connect with people and reach out because music, um, like my mom said, is a universal language and everybody can in some way or form connect with music. And so I, when, oh yeah, so the next song that we will play is actually something that I um, composed for street music. Um, last, this past year at Andrews University, I'm, I'm a music major there, so I was taking a music theory class. And the final project for our music theory class was a composition. And it could be any, with any instrumentation that you wanted or any style, just had to um, utilize the skills that we had learned over the past year in music theory. And so I immediately thought, I'm going to compose a violin and cello duet because every time when we go out and do street music with just Grant and I, there is, it's, it's always hard to find good violin cello duets that are not extremely difficult to put together in a short amount of time. So uh, this one, for the lack of a more creative title, is called Themes and Variations in G. So I hope you enjoy it. Grant, do you have your music?
So I'd like to share with you another story. This is from my personal experience of how music brought joy. So, in this past month of April, I went to a lot of places, <laughs> but the majority of my time in April was spent on a mission trip in Mongolia with Fountain View. And during the second week, we had the opportunity to go to different schools during the morning and afternoon to teach English, teach health, and teach music. Now, at first we got there, we're thinking, these kids have never even really seen violins, cellos, um, you know, brass instruments. They have their own traditional instruments, but they haven't really seen a whole lot of that. I mean, they've seen it online, but not in person. So we went to a church called UB Central. UB stands for Ulaanbaatar, which is the capital of Mongolia. It's the smallest province of Mongolia, and it's a city itself. And in that school, it was actually run by Adventists, Mongolian Adventists, but the kids that went there were not, um, I don't believe that they were Christian, they just came um, because it was the nearest school. And we thought to ourselves, how are we going to teach music? They don't even, like, they don't have experience with basic counting or rhythm. Well, some of them do, but not a lot of them do. And they haven't really seen string instruments. So what we did, we had several different instruments, um, horn, trumpet, flute, pan flute, um, cello, and violin. And there might have been another that I'm forgetting. But we each went up and demonstrated the range of the instrument and the, uh, we play a song on it. And I choose a different song every time and play something, because we did several sessions, so you know, one group of kids come in, then a different grade would come in, we do it um, for each grade every day and we um, figure out different things to do for them. And I play a song and then afterwards, I would, after the first couple, I didn't really catch on until the, probably the third, um, the third run through of our little um, spiel that we did for them. <laughs> and I would go, so they sat in kind of pews like this, but they're, yeah, because it was in the sanctuary we taught of the, because the school, the third floor of the school is the UB Central Church. So on the top floor, they're sitting in pews like these, and they're little kids, probably s up to sixth graders, I mean, actually up to 10th graders, I think, but we only had one 10th grade class. And then the rest of them were like first grade to sixth grade. And we have these little kids sitting right here, and I go to the first one, and I take my cello, well, not my cello, it was a filming cello because we don't bring real cellos to Mongolia because that's just kind of risky. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, I take the cello, put it on the shoulder. Obviously, it's a little bit big because the children are kind of small. It's a full-size cello. So put it, put it on their shoulder there, and I let them try it out. <laughs> um, didn't necessarily sound very good, but each time, they, each time a kid got to try that, they just, they, they had this smile on their face, this radiance when they did it. And I was thinking, man, if only there was a, like, a music teacher here that they could, you know, get more acquainted with some of these instruments. But the main point is that each time I went down the line, you know, some, they, they'd try it and other kids would laugh and they'd all smile. And it was just a really unique experience to see the joy that a simple, I mean, a junk cello, maybe 50 bucks, you know, could bring to some little kids when you just give them a try, to try a new instrument. It was a unique and amazing experience. <laughs> As my 
as my grandpa mentioned, I um, about a year and a half ago, I was in Thailand, and as Grant shared how music can be used um, very effectively in the mission field, I experienced that firsthand for a whole year because I had the privilege to teach music or teach violin lessons at a music school called Peace Music Academy in a city called Khon Ken, Thailand. And it had just started maybe two years before I came. So there were, I think, about 30 to 40 students when I came. But when I left, there were over 75 students, I believe. So it's grown quite a bit because Thai people love music. It was the idea of, some, of an AFM career missionary family who uh, went to Thailand um, and they, they learned the language and they scouted out some different areas in the city where, or in the country and they, they went to Khan Ken and they realized that here was a place where music could be used in a very effective way to um, reach families and to build a community within a music school and so they started it up and over the, the time that I was there it was really neat because I was able to experience how especially one family became very close with the missionary families. One Thai family was quite impacted by this music school and I had the privilege to experience part of their story and then after I left I, was, I heard more about the story but I'm going to read for you an article that Christopher Sorensen, the, the administrator, the missionary who is the administrator at the school wrote about this man and his family. Um, it's called Not By Chance. P. Jun, that's the man's name, P. Jun sat behind the counter in his pharmacy tapping on his smartphone. A lull between customers provided him an opportunity to check out what was happening in the world and search the web for music lesson options in Khan Ken, Thailand. He had grown discontent with his daughter's piano studies at another school. The lessons were expensive and his girls, ages 11 and 9, weren't advancing very quickly. Then the lady in the laundromat next door turned on her radio and an advertisement caught his ear. Is your child wasting their valuable t development years watching too much TV and growing addicted to video games? Are you looking for fun activities that will help your child improve in school and grow up to be a well-balanced person? Peace Music Academy has a solution. <laughs> Studies show that music education stimulates brain development and function and may contribute to improved success in many other life skills. Peace Music Academy, located next to Lake Nongko in Ban Pet Subject District, exists to promote the holistic development of students and their families through the joy of studying music. Our teachers come from around the world and teach classes in a combination of Thai and English. For me, of course, it was mostly English. We offer opportunities for music appreciation and development through classes and performances in violin, viola, piano, ukulele, voice, guitar, and flute. Come visit us for a free trial lesson or call us at dot dot dot. P. Jun listened to the advertisement with growing interest and he copied down our phone number. A couple days later, he and his two daughters enrolled in our beginner ukulele class. A few weeks later, all three performed in our school recital. They had so much fun that Jun created a Thai Facebook fan page called Lovers of Peace Music Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Jun and his daughters advanced so quickly in their lessons and had so much fun that he began thinking about opening a ukulele store where people in Konken could find quality ukuleles at reasonable prices. I, of course, encouraged him to follow his dream. So he ordered about 25 ukuleles and hung them on the walls in the back half of his pharmacy. <laughs> he then began to advertise Konken's newest ukulele shop, Dino Ukulele, referring to Konken's famous dinosaur fossils and museum. On Thanksgiving Day, 
our school had our second annual Thanksgiving celebration. We invited June and his family to join us. He played his ukulele and sang, Let all things now living, a song of thanksgiving, to God the Creator, triumphantly raise. After the program, prayer, and meal, he came over and told me he thought the music was very beautiful. Is this the kind of music you play in your church? He asked. Yes, I replied. I would like to come and visit your church sometime, June said. Would that be okay? Can Buddhists come to your church? <laughs> of course, I replied. You are welcome anytime. But a month passed, and June didn't make the time to visit our church. Then, just after our Christmas concert, in which he, his girls, and his wife all played their ukuleles, June told me again, I think I would like to go to your church and play music with you, and I think I can make it every Saturday. But if I can't go every Saturday, is that okay? <laughs> of course, June, I said. And so, for a couple of months now, June has been coming to church regularly and playing his ukulele with the, with the praise team. He is often the first to arrive for practice on Sabbath morning, and he is not quick to leave. He stays for the sermon, Sabbath school, discussion groups, and potluck afterwards. He even stays for Sabbath afternoon, afternoon activities. It seems he has found a church family and a spiritual home. A couple weeks ago in our Sabbath school group, June shared a simple testimony about that first day almost a year ago when he just happened to hear the radio ad that led him and his family to be begin this amazing musical and now spiritual journey. I'm beginning to believe that, many, that my hearing your ad that day was not a mere coincidence. Perhaps God had a purpose and plan for me to hear it. Mm -hmm. Amen, I said. Surely, chimed the other members of our smart, small group. That very Sabbath, I had the privilege of introducing June to the family who generously sponsored that radio advertisement for our school. And by God's grace, I expect someday to have the joy of introducing him and his family to you, our dear friends, supporters, and prayer warriors, who are all part of the chain intentionally and sacrificially stretched across the world for the purpose of bringing the joy of Jesus to the people of Thailand and beyond, not at all by chance. And so this was a very, I, I actually haven't read this article until, until yesterday, but I knew the gist of the story since I had been there and I heard from some of the missionaries. Um, but it's just really cool to hear how that that community that is created by the music school has been in, uh, impacting a, a family very um, deeply. And just a side note, I heard recently that um, P. June is, I think he said, I heard from someone that he is interested in being baptized. Oh. So I was really happy to hear that. And also his two daughters, one of them he's been bringing to church pretty regularly. Uh, her name is Plang, and both both his daughters were involved with the music camp, which Grant's class from Fountain View went to do at Peace Music Academy as their mission, their senior class mission trip. And so, as a result of that um, chamber music camp, I have also heard that both of them have become more interested in um, Christianity and the Bible. And the younger daughter is. Um, I think she requested to have Bible studies, so I was really happy to hear that too. So, um, yeah, that that pretty much sums up our program. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to um, encourage each of you that as you have, I'm sure all different gifts and talents that you would use them um, for reaching out to others and like um, we shared already creating communities and um, connecting with people, whether it's through music or through writing or speaking, um, whatever it may be. And it is our hope that each person that hears our music and hears the music of other um, musicians dedicated to God that we can all meet in that holy city. Um, this is our next song, The Holy City. So I hope you enjoy our last last piece and have a great rest of your evening. Amen.
tremendous. Amen. Absolutely outstanding. Praise God for that gift. It is a gift. You have a tremendous gift. All of you, thank you so much for sharing with us. Let's stand and be dismissed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing these young people with this special gift of music that brings glory to your name. And we are looking for your great return so we can go to that new Jerusalem and rejoice with all those who have had the opportunity to know you and to share you. And tonight, through this gift of music, we've had a new touch of your heart. And we thank you for that and ask that you dismiss us with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Let me get a picture of this.